Another weekend of high school football is in the books. Now multiple weeks into the postseason, we had some big matchups in both eight and 11 player football. We'll begin with eight player state semifinals. Let's head to Crystal Falls. The Forest Park Trojans hosting the Onekama Portagers on Saturday in state semis with a chance to clinch a spot in state finals at the Dome this coming weekend. And on the very first play from scrimmage, Dax Huki, coming off his four touchdown game last week, takes the carry right and there's plenty of space for him to run. He's off to the races and he's going to take this one all the way in for the score. The Trojans set the tone early and it's 7-0. Then still in the first quarter, the Trojans driving again, this time Grayson Sundell in the backfield runs it right and there's nobody in the same zip code. He's in and it's 14-0 Trojans. Sundell would later add another score to make it 21-0. Then nearing halftime, same score, Onekama's Nathaniel Barnett runs it out of the backfield. He's able to escape a tackle and hits the edge. He goes streaking down the sideline and takes some momentum back. It was 21-8 at halftime. Then on to the third quarter, Onekama with the ball first, but conditions were slippery. The quarterback loses it. It's recovered by Vic Giuliani deep in Portager's territory, setting up this run to the outside by Nick Stevens. He's going to lunge for the pylon and gets in. The Trojans are up 28-8. Onekama would score again to make it 28-16, but nearing the end of the third quarter, it's Huki again from the backfield. Going to fight through a couple waves of defenders and fights his way into the end zone. The Trojans stay in control 35 to 16. Then ensuing Portager drive, trying to stay alive. The quarterback running for his life. It's another fumble and there's going to be a scramble for the ball. Ultimately, the Trojans' Noah Starr recovers along the sideline. The Trojans with good field position again, setting up a big run here from Trent Kanich. He's going to deliver the big stiff arm and will go the distance. A big day on offense, defense, and special teams for the Trojans as they clinch a spot in state finals with a win, 49-24. to it's been our theme all year. We found a way, find a way to win. We stopped the momentum. We got, you know, we got a score right away. We got that turnover, led to a score. They got that turnover on the kickoff, and you know, when dominoes start falling, it's hard to stop them. And and that's what happened with us today. We, we got on a roll there in the second half and took over. I feel so happy for them. It was a, it was a fun game. It was back and forth. There's some motion, momentum. You saw how that works in the game, and it was just amazing. I feel so good for the kids. There's smiles across the board, and we're, I'm happy for them. It's gonna be fun. Next up, let's head to Mountaineer Stadium. Iron Mountain playing host to Beale City in their regional final. This one a rematch of last year's regional final, which was won by Beale City. We went scoreless in the first quarter. We're going to pick up in the second. Iron Mountain with possession, and Ian Martel is back to pass. Looks to his right, and then comes back the other way. He connects with Alex Jane, and Jane makes a man miss with a cutback and is off to the races. 39 yards there for the score, and the Mountaineers take the 7-0 lead early. After a Beale City fumble on the ensuing kickoff. Iron Mountain has the football inside the five-yard line, looking to go up two scores as we're under a minute remaining in the half. The Aggies defense comes up with a big stop as Jane is short of the goal line on this run. Iron Mountain with no timeouts needs to hurry things up. This is third down at about the one-yard line. Jane stuffed again just short of the end zone and that will make it fourth down again with no timeouts. They need to pick up the pace as the clock is just seconds left. They hurry to the line. Martela going to try and sneak it across but Beale City's defense makes a huge goal line stop as the first half buzzer sounds. We enter the half at 7-0. Beale City started to get things going in the third. Here they come up with a big turnover. Drew Block going up to get the interception as he fights it away from Oscar Kangas. Then moving ahead a bit later, Kyler Smith to Garrison Zucker. Down the sidelines, this one a 58-yard connection for the touchdown that will tie this game up at 7. Then nearing the end of the third quarter, Beale City back with the football, still deadlocked at 7. And the Seas are going to part for Block. He takes the handoff right up the gut of the Mountaineers defense. This one a 55-yard rushing touchdown to give Beale City the lead 14-7. Iron Mountain had their chances, but in the end in this one, Beale City captures a regional championship with a 14-7 win over Iron Mountain. Well, I mean, Beale City is a really good football team, right? I just thought that, you know, I told their coach, their ability to run the ball and our ability to run the ball, I thought that was the difference. You know, you got kids playing their tails off for, for four quarters, and you look at a one-score game, comes down to making a play here, a play there, but we had chances. You know, it's no one's fault. You know, our kids played their tails off. I'm proud of them. We had a great season. I told them, to, you know, walk off the field healthy with their head high. 
and I'm proud of them out your football team this year. You know, the relationships that those guys will, will have for the rest of their life is something special, and I look forward to being a part of those relationships for a very long time. Next up, we're going to head to Menominee, the Maroons hosting North Muskegon in 11-player regional finals. We're going to pick up scoreless in the first quarter. Hunter Wilder takes the handoff for the Norsemen, will fight off a few Maroons in the backfield, and hits the outside, able to get to the edge, and goes in for the score. North Muskegon goes up 7 to nothing. Then on to the second quarter, same score, Menominee driving the handoff to Clayton Miller, but as he tries to cut back upfield, the ball is punched out. North Muskegon would recover. But on their ensuing drive on a big fourth down, the Maroons defense will hold. They get the stop and we'd go to halftime still at 7-0. On to the third quarter, a muffed punt by the Maroons allowed North Muskegon to kick a field goal. Then a fumble would set the Norsemen up for this run from Wilder. Another score here puts the Norsemen up 16-0. And that was the story in this one. A few costly turnovers for the Maroons stifled their day. They fall to North Muskegon 23-0. Take a bad day to not play maroon football. Um, we had a lot of mistakes littered all over the field, and uh, against a good football team like that, uh, you certainly cannot give them that many chances. These seniors, uh, since we took over, we're sophomores. We took a boatload of them up, and the seniors led us all year. Um, and it was a great season. We just did not play good football today. And finally, another score from eight-man football out east. The Pickford Panthers get the win over Indian River Inland Lakes. The Panthers clinch a spot in eight-man state finals at the Superior Dome this coming weekend.